Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing well. You know me, I'm Tom. Okay, this is going to be a long video, but what I'm about to show you is my concept of how you go off grid and, of course, obviously, a new RV. Keep this in the back of your mind. There's no power up here, there's no water up here, there's no sewer. There's nothing. This property, as it exists, does not have an address. It's about as off-grid as you can possibly get. And that's kind of the moral of this story, is how off-grid can you go and still have the conveniences of living in a city? Well, I'm going to show you. So bear with me, and I'm going to give you a rundown uh, how to I basically how I did this and put this uh, RV completely off grid. Okay, ready for the long journey? All right, so am I. I want to show you everything I've done and did it all. I did this all yesterday. Okay, here we go. I got this on my tripod, so I'm gonna try to get it off of here without deleting the video. So bear with me. Ah, uh, yeah, we're still on. Okay. Number one is water. Okay, there's the water line coming in. Now, follow, follow with me on this as I explain this to you. Okay? First thing we're going to do is go to the water tower. <clears throat> so let's go. You can see the water hose. And this is a flex hose, half inch. Now, the one problem we knew we were gonna face is we couldn't just lay this uh, obviously on top of the road and drive over this before you know we'd, uh, you know, break the hose. So, or crush it or whatever, or put a hole in it. So what we've done is put this hose underground, but it's encased in a two inch, 30 foot long steel tube, okay? And all we did, when I say we, let me, uh, let me say something. I wanna give a shout out to the young man from Statesville who came up here to help and volunteer his services. Also, another prepper friend of mine of the female persuasion came up and helped do a lot of unloading and unpacking of a lot of gear. So we basically had four people up here yesterday knocking this thing out. And I want to give a shout out uh, to those people that showed up. You know who you are. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And uh, on with the tour. But anyway, like I said, this water hose is encased in a steel tube. So now I can drive over it with the bulldozer, the dump truck, whatever, and it's not going to hurt this hose. Now this is gravity fed, obviously, off this, this building, this tin roof. Okay? 300 gallons of water. Now let's go back and I'll show you how we pressurize the system. Now this RV has got some special features to it that I need to explain because the video that I did when I was picking this thing up, I, I want to just clear a few things up. This RV, this Springdale, has an Arctic package on it. That's right, this, this RV is meant to go to Alaska or wherever, but it does have an Arctic package on it. So it's got a lot more insulation. It's got a built-in gas fireplace, Arctic package, okay? So this is a, a little bit more of an upgraded model. All right, let's back to the water. Number one, we had to put an inline 110 amp 
uh, or 110 voltage pump. And I just mounted it to the frame. Okay. There it is. Inbound line, outbound line. Still got to put a hose clamp on that side. It's just zip ties. But this is the pressurized side. So this is the pump. <coughs> Excuse me. There's the electrical going across. It's connected into an extension cord that runs along the frame and back to the uh, solar panels. And I'll show you all that in a few minutes. Then it feeds into this filter. And these are pretty expensive, but this will eliminate a lot of uh, the contaminants because we are running gray water, okay? This is rainwater, but it's still considered gray water. We got it hooked up to the city water connection, okay? On off valve, no problem. Now, another thing we had to do is I want you to see this. Since we are out in the middle of nowhere, there's a lot of fire ants, there's a lot of bugs, there's mice. Every point of ground contact, we put towels and then soaked them in ammonia. The tires, everything. Anything that's ground contact, there's towels soaked in ammonia. And then what we did is we put ant granulars, an, uh, uh, an anti-insect uh, compound granular and, and, and spread it out all around this area. Okay, so we're fighting the fire ants because we got a lot of fire ants. Plus we sprayed it with a uh, uh, home defense, soaked all these contact points in ammonia, those rags, and basically <clears throat> putting a barrier around this RV completely for insects and bugs and mice. And we even got rat killer thrown underneath there. So there's a lot of preventative measures. Uh, it's a little toxic right now, but the bottom line is we have to knock down these critters because they're best, they're going to try to get into this thing. That's their bottom line. But being that this has an Arctic package on it, the underneath of this RV is really well insulated. And it's also got a huge canvas underneath it that's stapled up and then sprayed with foam expander stuff all over. So it's pretty good. All right. So back to this. The other thing we had to do is which I got out here at 7 o'clock in the morning and I built this. I'm no IT guy, but they're like 200 watts a piece, so they're 600 watt panels. I built this frame and it's dead on the money. These panels fit in there nice and tight. I did it like a screened in port style system and then put the two by four across the top, which locks them in, into the frame. Created a, uh, obviously a contact point there with the two by four in that post. I put that post up there, leveled it out. It's at 45 degrees. Put a treated four by four down at the bottom. Also hammered in stakes on both sides so the four by four don't move and then a nailed toenailed all this bottom in to the four by four. And since the sun here, as you can see, there it is. It's getting direct sunlight right now and it'll get direct sunlight in this position where we got it mounted for a good, oh, six to seven hours a day easily. Okay. Now, the thing that we were waiting on is the German inverter, which we got it and you can see we ran the wires across the top. And the other challenge we had, and I'll go over that in a few minutes, but let me show you this. This is also where the generator sits. And this is a self-contained electric start. And then it 
converts from 220 down to 110. And there's the wiring in series. We put them in series. The solar of uh, the solar array, the the the, in, the you know the wiring. Put all that in series. Like I said, I'm not an IT guy or an electrician, but you can see what's going on there. Okay. All right. So this has got right now the the solar panels are charging up the inverter system. Like I said, it's an in German inverter. This is your gas generator backup. Plus, you got water, pressurized water that's on a 110 that can be run off the generator or run off the solar. You got gas packs that run the furnace, the fireplace, the stove, the hot water heater, okay? Then there's an electrical backup redundant system that'll kick in as soon as we put the generator on, it'll run it. And then on full charge, the solar panel array, the inverter the battery system, lithium ion battery system, will take over on light duty charging. Now it won't run the air conditioner, but it'll run pretty much the rest of the systems into RV lights, things of that nature. We got lucky, but here, here's the one thing we had a problem with, is running these wires into the RV. We all scratched our head and said, well, what's the best solution? The thing we would have had to do is cut a hole into the frame and notch it, or notch it into something. We would have had to create some way from these wires to bypass the frame of this door. This door is an outdoor, <clears throat> excuse me, an outdoor kitchenette, okay? That's all this is. So I sunk a two by four right here, braced it, put a latch here, ran my cables in because we didn't want to destroy the manufactured frame, either the, the frame over here or the frame of this door. We didn't want to do that. We wanted to stay away from it. So let's unlock it so it automatically comes up. There we go. Now, I just ran the wires through the back, brought them across here, and there's our system right there. And this is from Germany. And like I said, self-contained inverter, generator, ACDC output system. We got a primary lead coming in here that comes off the, the pump, the water pump. Then we had to tow, uh, we had to wire these in like this to get it to charge because the factory plugs weren't matching up to anything we had. So we didn't do anything. So the system, all you have to do is just turn it on. Excuse me. It's sensitive. Hold on. You gotta hold it. There he goes. Okay, we have everything shut off right now. It's just got no charge in it because we're not, we're not using it. We just installed it, but we tested the system and it does charge. Okay, there's your DC, AC, and that's it. Okay, let me cut these off. Okay. And gas grill right here. Of course, we'll never use that, obviously. <laughs> you know, that would be stupid. Burn that damn thing up. We've got a refrigerator right here. We're definitely using it. Okay, pots and pans, storage. So we had everything running yesterday. And it worked. Backup gas. So you can see, I just tied it all in. Just braced it. Treated two by fours, which of course the cost of two by fours is untreated lumber is insane right now, insane. But what do you think? Now, here's the deal. If you think about it this way, and I always tell you guys to think about it this way. Right now, as of four o'clock yesterday afternoon, we we turned the whole thing on, okay? We had the air conditioner rolling, 
We had water running through the system and pressurized. We had the solar panels charging the inverter generator and hooked up the trailer for uh, all the other precautionary things, mice, ants, you know, bees, whatever. We treated the hell out of this thing, okay? And it's gonna sit here for a week with no one, no one's gonna live in this thing for a week until all this stuff, all these chemicals die down, okay? That's pretty much the story there. Here's another thing we did. The black water and gray water. Here's how we did these. Okay. We put screening over it, okay? Zip ties and screening. This is the gray water. So no rats would get up in there, and believe me, they will. They did it to my other old Prowler RV I had up here and tore the damn place up. Main power line going in off the generator. And there you go. And of course, we definitely tested this. You can see it's still dripping. This is your black water. This comes off the toilet. We got that valve shut. This valve open. This is the actual toilet. So he can still he can still take a piss in here if he wants to. That kind of thing. You know, wash his hands in the sink, but just cannot use the shitter. Okay? Can't use number two. No number two. Number, number one, he has to go in the shower so he can just use the shower. This is the shower. And it'll come out this way, and we only have to open this side. Uh, tight fit, tight fit in here. Okay. That's it. Now this RV is completely off-grid. Now, the important question is, well... If you can't use the black water tank and take a crap in the toilet, where would you go, Tom? Then you're not really meeting the requirements of being completely off grid. Well, I've got an answer for you on that one too. Now, being off grid, you've got to do a little bit of roughing it, right? Right. So guess what? That's what this room is set up for. Now, being that he has a shower in there, I don't have a shower. I still have to shower outside. He's got at least a working shower in his RV where I don't in the little house. But there's the cedar chips. Just fill it up with a trash bag. You know? Lights. And in the winter, we'll have a, a heater in here. Got my hammock set up. So you got a little chill out area here. You got your off-grid shitter there. You got your water collection system, free water. Gravity feds underground. Goes to the RV and it's pressurized. Then the power source, you've got three. You got gas. You got solar. And you got generator. So there's a three forms of power to run this. All very economical if you do it in the right combination at the right time in the right sequence to where you can still have all your systems working as you need them, whether you need heat or you need air conditioning, water. The only thing you, you, know, you can't do in there is that number two. And that's been taken care of. So there you go. This is my version of how you can go completely off-grid on a very, very, very small little piece of, you know, a little lot and do it next to nothing. Peace and quiet. Nobody's going to bother you. You're out of the city. You're away from harm. You know, if you're high risk, this is the kind of new challenges that everybody's going to be facing is making choices about their living arrangements in the next 10 to 20 years. Because the 
consistent thing that always is going to always be there is you got to have a place to live, right? If you want to live in a big fancy house with a big mortgage, that's totally your option, obviously. But if you decide that, you know, you're a pensioner or you have, you know, limited, limited income, but, you know, you've been smart all your life and you've been trying to save and you've been trying to do the right thing. You don't have too much stress on you financially, not a lot of heavy credit, you know, credit card debt load. Uh, you know, doing stupid things like I, buying a brand new car every four or five years, that's stupid too. So, you know, you know, if you just spend money that way, then obviously you're not saving for the future. But if you make a lot of money and you can afford it, then you can stroke a check, a one-time check, and go off grid literally in 30 days. That's the moral of the story. So what do you guys think? So this little piece of property has turned into a really cute, functional, well thought out execution of can a, a man or a woman doesn't have to, there's no age limit to this, but usually it's the seniors that think this way. Sometimes the younger people think this way. To go in cooperation with somebody that has remote land and set you up a clean, quiet, organized little area for you to literally let a year go by and wait for this whole COVID crisis to subside. Leave your opinions, please, on this topic. Comments, thumbs up, share, like, subscribe, hit the bell for future notifications, and I'll see you on the next video. And again, thanks to all the preppers and YouTube subscribers that helped me yesterday. I thank you again. And remember, folks, please subscribe to my channel because I'm almost at 20,000 subscribers. Oh, man, you guys make me feel so blessed. Thank you for watching Prepper Life.